question about what the Speaker of the House and the House Democrats did yesterday. And, you know, we have watched now, ever since President Trump was elected, uh, the House Democrats have been careening from impeachment theory to impeachment theory. Uh, they've careened from target to target for a while. Ten days or so ago, they were focused on impeaching Justice Kavanaugh. Now they're back to focusing on President Trump. But what we see repeatedly is a complete uh, lack of focus on, concern about evidence and facts. And what Speaker Pelosi did yesterday uh, really uh, was the worst we've seen yet, where she announced an impeachment inquiry without any evidence, without seeing a transcript of the phone call at issue, without seeing any details from the supposed whistleblower. And when you think about what that does, both from the perspective of our constitutional obligation uh, and from the perspective of our national security, uh, it ought to give every American grave concerns that they are dealing with this in a way that is absolutely so such a flagrant disregard of their constitutional responsibility. When Speaker Pelosi went out yesterday and announced that there would be an impeachment inquiry of the President of the United States, uh, at that moment our President was up in, in New York at the General Assembly. And he was there having meetings, as presidents do during those sessions, bilateral meetings with uh, other heads of state. There was absolutely no justification to launch this impeachment inquiry at all, no reason she had to do it yesterday. Uh, one can only guess that she did it because she was intentionally trying to weaken the president, trying to weaken his hand as he's dealing with crucial issues of national security uh, with our allies uh, and, and some of our adversaries. So it was an absolute disgrace. We're now in a situation where not only have they hurt national security, but they're fundamentally abdicating their constitutional responsibility. Impeachment is a very solemn, uh, grave uh, responsibility we all have. And for this speaker to be going down this path, and for the Democratic caucus to be going down this path before they have seen any evidence at all, uh, is something that I think is absolutely unprecedented in our history. So I uh, would like to now turn things over to the Republican leader of the House Judiciary Committee, Mr. Collins, to discuss this further. Thank you. Uh, what we're seeing is a continuation of just complete, <laughs> utter disrespect for this House. What we have seen over the past little bit, especially with the Speaker yesterday, jumping to conclusions. It is amazing that we're, what we are seeing coming out of this is taking hearsay, taking stuff you've not read, and saying it's going to be impeachment inquiry. I have one new... Uh, News flash for the speaker. She's not doing an impeachment inquiry. She's not doing the steps that it actually takes. It's just another decision by this speaker and the House uh, Democrats to disregard over 200 years of precedent in this House, where we actually have rules, we actually have things that matter, and they are so bent on getting at this president, especially while he was in New York City doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. It's just amazing to me. But I think uh, our caucus chair was she was too kind. Look, I'm gonna say this. They're more like Plinko. Ever watch the old game Plinko? This is the way they're treating impeachment. They just drop the thing in and see which way it bounces. Well, first it was Mueller, first it was this, first it was a Mueller, and they just brought it, trying to hit the imaginary target of getting rid of a president that they don't like. You don't do it this way. And what we saw on the House floor, in the House yesterday, in the discussions around that, when people talk about an impeachment inquiry, they talk about a speaker who's lost control of her own conference. We talk about a speaker who's lost control of the facts. We've talked about a speaker who no longer can honestly stand before the American people and honestly be a voice for her party or for reason. Because what they're supposed to be doing, they're not doing. And when they actually attack on a hearsay, when they attack with not even seeing, it just shows how desperate they have become. And when they become that desperate, it leads to a dysfunction in our committees. We've seen that, and I know um, Leader Jordan here is going to speak in just a minute from his committee perspective, but we saw this in our committee perspective. Just a week ago, the Democrats allowed a p Democrat donor, a large Democrat donor, to break the rules of this House and question Corey Lewandowski for 30 minutes, and there's almost been crickets that that was okay. It was not okay. When you break the rules of the House, when you go against that because you're so desperate to pin everything on a president, that is when it's become a disgrace. The Democrats now have frankly fallen to a disgraceful status. They need to explain to the American people why they've chose to trash the House instead of build up the American people and help this president when he is wanting to put America first. Well, let me just say uh, that she hadn't even seen. And... Um, my guess is, is because they are so focused on attacking 
attacking the individual the American people made president of the United States, that they're, they're looking for anything and everything. The Michael Cohen hearing didn't work for them. The John Dean hearing didn't work for them. The Mueller report and Mueller hearing didn't work for them. The Lewandowski hearing didn't work for them. So let's do a press conference and let's talk about something we haven't even seen, because maybe that'll work. That's how desperate and ridiculous this has gotten, and I think the American people see through it. They see clearly the job that this president has done, and they appreciate that, and they think what the Democrats are doing is ridiculous. And frankly, the precedent it sets is, is dangerous as well. So um, look, we'll look at the document, um, but I think uh, the facts are that they got nothing else, and they're doing, they're doing the kind of things that they did yesterday. 160-some Democrats, I think, are wanting to move forward about something they haven't even read, haven't even seen. I don't know that we've ever seen that in, uh, in the history of the Congress. So uh, with that, I'll yield to our leader who's doing a great job leading our team, and that's uh, Chairman McCarthy. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Steve. Steve, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't say that He's doing a good job, too. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jim. Uh, yesterday was a low point in Nancy Pelosi's speakership. And when you see a Speaker of the House come forward and accuse a President of the United States of breaking the law to the level that it should meet the definition in the Constitution of high crimes and misdemeanor without even being able to name the crime, without having even read the report that she's basing this wild and irresponsible accusation on, is the height of irresponsibility for Speaker of the House to do that. And unfortunately, we've seen this drumbeat towards impeachment from her conference since the day Donald Trump got elected. They made it clear first with the resist movement that they didn't want to acknowledge he was elected. He was duly elected by the people of this country. There's an election next year where we can hash out who's going to be the next president. And when Donald Trump's reelected, who knows if they'll continue to go down that road. But the fact that they're using this majority to try to undo the results of the 2016 election is disgraceful. They can't name a high crime and misdemeanor. If you're going to base it on a press report from a secondhand person that thinks they heard something, and that's the most you've got uh, to claim that crimes were committed, this is a serious responsibility that the Congress has. Only three times in the history of our country has a House of Representatives brought forward articles of impeachment. Yet Jerry Nadler, when he took the chairmanship of the committee just a few weeks ago, said that he wants to bring articles of impeachment to the House floor by the end of this year. And when you ask them, what are those articles of impeachment? They can't name a single one. They thought the Mueller report was going to produce impeachable evidence. And it didn't. In fact, it showed the president didn't collude. And so instead of dropping it and actually focusing on the real problems this country faces, instead of bringing the USMCA bill to the floor, which would pass and create over 160,000 new jobs in America, which has broad support, Republicans and Democrats, labor unions and trade groups, instead of doing those kind of things, lowering prescription drug prices, when we've brought bills out of committee unanimously to lower prescription drug prices, which is a major problem that families are facing. Those bills could be signed into law today, creating new jobs and lowering drug prices for Americans. But instead, late Nancy Pelosi is wasting her speakership trying to undo the results of the 2016 election by impeaching the president with no basis. Now, if you look at the Constitution, it gives the House of, uh, of Representatives the ability to impeach a president for crimes. It's a check on the executive. And instead, Nancy Pelosi is using impeachment as a check on the electorate because she doesn't agree with the results of the 2016 election where people actually elected Donald Trump president. There is going to be an election next year, and we can litigate all of the differences between a conservative, pro-business approach to free market enterprise versus socialism. And clearly, they're moving towards socialism. Uh, but to abuse the power of the House and the speakership by trying to go after a president even when there's no basis of fact that she can name. She cannot name one high crime and misdemeanor, and yet she still wants to move forward with impeachment. It's disgraceful. And with that, I'll bring up our leader, Kevin McCarthy. Thank you, Steve. You know, normally, in a normal Congress, we'd come here and we'd talk to you about what's going to be on the floor. 
what legislation is passing through committee, what problem that we're going to solve, our ability to work together. But let's see the facts of this Congress. Democrats have voted three times to impeach the President. Twice they voted before the Mueller report even had one word public. I just watched the Speaker yesterday demean the office of the Speakership. I understand members when they want to be political, but the power of the Speaker is a much different place to be. I listened to the Speaker claim that the President violated the law based on nothing that she had read, based upon a whistleblower that wasn't even listening to a conversation with an IG saying that the whistleblower has political bias. I listened to Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker, promise the American public if they trusted the Democrats with the majority that they would be different, that they'd be different this time, that they'd work to solve problems. At the same time, I watched Congressman Nadler run for a chairmanship of judiciary. He promised his conference that he would impeach the President. The Democrats lied to the American public, but Chairman Nadler kept his promise to the Democratic conference. Make no mistake, yesterday was a dark day for America. It was a dark day for the rule of law that the Speaker of the House would claim a President violated the law without ever having any information to judge it on. It was a dark day for national security that you were willing to jeopardize the national security of our country today and in the future because of your own political bias. Name me one world leader regardless of who sits in the Oval Office, of how honest of a conversation they are going to have if they're fearful that the transcripts are going to become public to the world. It was a dark day for the rule of law, that a president is going to be held guilty without any proof in the process. It's a dark day for the rule of law when we watch a former vice president tell the public that he did a quick pro quo, that he told another country that he would hold up a billion dollars if they would not fire a prosecutor that was looking to his own son that he flew on an Air Force Two, that if they did not fire them in six hours, he was leaving. It is a dark day for the Congress, for the actions of this speaker, but more importantly, for the action of this majority party. <coughs> they promised the American public they would be different. But USMCA is not coming to the floor. They promised the American public that they'd work together. But when we have a bipartisan prescription drug bill, they put a poison pill so it can't become law. They promised the American public that they'd protect them but they will not improve the immigration system of America to solve the problem. They promised they would be different, and they have not. I'm not speaking to you as a Republican leader. I'm speaking to you as an American that's disgusted with what has taken place by the Speaker of the House <coughs> and the action of this majority party, who's only driven because they did not like the outcome of a 2016 election. It is time to put people before politics. It is time to run by the rule of law. It is time to uphold that you look at evidence before you judge whether somebody is guilty. And you know what? It is time to stop putting the American public through this nightmare. How many more months will we have to investigate? How many more millions will we have to spend to prove that they are wrong and the election is over. I know they are better than this. I'm just asking that they act like it. Yes, sir. I just wanted to see if you could, you've talked a lot about constitutional violations. I um, wanted to ask if you could <clears throat> respond specifically to what Speaker Pelosi said yesterday when she cited what she believes is a violation. 
I'll just quote from her Please. from the transcript. She said, the president has admitted to asking the president of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. The actions of the Trump presidency revealed discernible facts of betrayal, betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of national security, betrayal, betrayal of integrity of our election. So I guess two things to focus on there. They're saying they're the, pre the president did not say he did that. You have not read the transcripts. And what is being said about the transcripts, let's think what the Democrats are saying. They are claiming that the president did a quick pro quo. They're claiming that the president brought up Biden eight different times when no one has read this transcript. And the Speaker of the House, the individual who's in line to be president if something happens to the president or the vice president, claims there's a violation of the law based upon a whistleblower of facts that she never read and a whistleblower that was not even on the phone call. Now the President of the United States is being put in a position that no other President in the history of this country has to do, that he is going to release a transcript of a conversation with another world leader so the entire world can see it, simply because they want to impeach him. He has to continue time and time again. How many millions of dollars did we go through with the Mueller report? This speaker that claims the president violated also nominated Adam Schiff, the congressman of our intel committee, that is a gathering for our national security. The same individual, Congressman Adam Schiff, who had lied to the American public for the last two years, who looked into a camera and said he had proof beyond circumstantial evidence. Well, you know what? We spent millions of dollars more than a year. We went around the world from our very best people from the FBI and others, and they found that was a lie. But he's still sitting at the helm of a chairmanship dealing with the national security. And at the same time the speaker sits there, she listened to a vice president in his own words say that, yes, he did hold up money to Ukraine unless they would fire a prosecutor that worked for Ukraine that was looking after his son's activities. Not one word about that. No, I think what the speaker did was a dark day, not only for this institution, but for the rule of law. And she put this country in harm's way when it comes to national security and our view around the world. At the exact same time, the leader of our country is sitting in the UN meeting with other world leaders, a challenge with Iran, a challenge with China and others. And she stands before that she's going to do a press conference all day long to say what's going to happen with impeachment. And she claims he violated the law with no proof, with no information, simply the fact that she does not like the outcome of the election. That questions her ability to even be speaker in my eyes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, two questions. First of all, do you believe that the White House should make this transcript and the whistleblower complaint public? And secondly, they shouldn't have to, but they are. But secondly, do you think that the White House would have done so had the speaker not taken the action she did yesterday? <laughs> First of all, naming any president, should they have to release the transcripts of every conversation they have with another world leader? The answer should be no. But this president, based upon what this majority party has done, lying to the American public on what they would work on, you're sitting before us today where America could be stronger this month. Not only our GDP, but more than 160,000 people at the lowest level would have a job. But you know what? We're not going to pass USMCA. We've got a crisis on the border. We got a challenge when it comes to technology. Europe is acting, but is America. All that falls under the Judiciary Committee, but Nadler made a promise to his conference that he'd impeach this president. We had an IG report that looked at the DOJ. In any normal Congress, they would bring that Inspector General before that committee that has jurisdiction to see what is going on. But no, we don't have time for that. The only thing they have time for is try to change the course of the 2016 election. But you know what this president has done? He's gone beyond what any president has done before. He is now s putting forth the transcript so everybody in the world can read each word that he said to another world leader. And it changes a whole different standard for us. And you know what? In the end, it will make the country less safe by the actions of this speaker. Yes. Yes, sir. How much do you think this impeachment 
You know, and I'm not worried about energizing the Trump base. I'm worried about what it's doing to the fabric of America. I'm worried about what is it showing to the rest of the world. Just as we went through the Mueller report and the rest of the world had to watch as long as we, and it came back, and we found out that Adam Schiff lied to us, and that the president did nothing wrong. But at the end of the day, I think what the rest of the country want to know, why did it start? Why would any president in the future have to go through this? I'd want to know the answer to the origin of that, and I'd want to make sure it never happens to anybody. What I'm concerned now is the Speaker of the House changed the course of that office for the history of this country. That a body that brings legislation, a body that represents the rule of law, would change the course of what it actually means. To claim that a president had violated a law with no information, based it on a whistleblower she does not know that wasn't even on a phone call, to claim that the president did a quick pro quo and mentioned Biden's name eight times. But when this transcript comes out, I wa- is it out? So I think at the end of the day, the speaker owes an apology to this nation, and I think it's even questioned whether she should stay in her job. We are done with this. The transcript does say that he asked